thank you for showing yourself to be friendly in the house of God. Yes, hallelujah. 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 Yeah, so as we return to our seats, we just bless God. We thank God for our online guests, our family, and our friends. We bless God for you that you could have gone to any other church online, but we bless the Lord that you decided to enjoy worship, to enjoy service with us. BTV. And so we bless God for you, and we ask you if you would have an evangelism moment, evangelism moment, and that you would click like and share so that you can share this word with your family and your friends. Amen. 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 Glory to God. And we want to thank God for everybody here. Amen. In the house. In the house. Glory to God. We thank God for you. But first and foremost, we want to honor our bishop, oh, our bishop, on, Bishop Wanda J. Cisco. Yeah, the one Hallelujah. and only. World renowned. Yes, world renowned. <laughs> global, global ministry, yes, yes. global anointing. Amen. We thank God for her covering. We thank God for her prayers, even yeah. in her absence. And so we bless God for the angel of this house, our mother, Amen. and the gospel. Hallelujah. So we thank God. We thank God for our family and our friends. Our children are here, Mike and Jaden. We bless God and our niece, Raisha. And we bless God for our parents. Amen. Amen. Dr. Al, Al and Thelma. Bless God for them. Amen. 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 Thank God for them. Amen. Glory to God. So is there a word from the Lord? Yes, it is. Hallelujah. And so we're going to ask you if you would follow along with us. And we're going to go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 6. I'm sorry, correction. Verse 7 and 8. That's Revelation 3, verse 7 and 8. Amen. It's our custom to stand, and we can all stand all over the building. Amen. Amen. In the reverence of the word of God grass withers and the flower fades but the word of God shall stand forever. Amen. Amen. If you have found it, say amen. 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 Yes, Revelation 3, 7 and 8. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And wait a minute. Can we, can we get a, a show of a, a amen if everybody found Revelations? Amen. amen. Now if you don't know how to get to the end of the Bible, something's wrong with you. You need to check your religion and your Christianity. Amen. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Just go way back to the end of the Bible. Amen. 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 Go ahead. Glory to God. Amen. So thus is the reading of God's word. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These things say, He who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. All right, before you take your seats, let's go down uh, Benning Road. We're going to hit 295 and go way back to the Old Testament in Old Isaiah chapter 22. Amen? Yeah. Isaiah chapter 22, verse 22. We're reading from the Amplified Version. It says, Then I will set on his shoulder the key of the house of David. When he opens, no man will shut. And when he shuts, no man will open. Come on, Amen. give God praise for Amen. the reading. Amen. Bless God of for his the word. word. You may take your seats. And, and while you're taking your seats, look at your neighbor and just say, What door will you choose? Yes, what door will you choose? Yeah, and yeah. then we have a subtopic, and it is season of open doors. Hallelujah. Come season on, come on, come of on. open doors. Come on, look at your neighbor and encourage him. Say, This is your season for your door to be open. Yes. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Hallelujah. God, Hallelujah. we just bless your name, O oh God, because you are worthy, O oh God. God, we exalt you today, O oh God. Yes, so, Lord. God, as we stand behind your sacred desk, O oh God, God, we ask you, O oh God, to decrease us, Lord God. Allow the Holy Spirit, O oh God, to increase, to rest, rule, and abide in us, O oh God, and through us. And, God, that we may come one with you in the name of Jesus, O oh God. And as that we come one with you, O oh God, that my husband and I I will become one, Lord God, that they will hear one voice, oh God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, oh God, that they will see only you, oh God, and we thank you in the name of Jesus, oh God. Speak, Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, amen. let the church say amen. 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 Back in the day, our parents, our grandparents uh, used to watch this show called Let's Make a Deal. I know all the young folk in here like, what in the world is Let's Make a Deal? But back in the day, we had, I know they got a new version now, uh, but back in the day, it, it was a guy named uh, Monty Hall, and he ran the, the game. And, and, and it was structured like this. They would give one person $100, like Pastor Hillary would get $100, and then she would have three doors to choose from. It would be that door coming in, Bishop's door, and the door where Elder Rico is. But the object of the game now is to have her to make a choice. She either can keep her $100 yes. or she can choose one of these doors. Now, she doesn't know what's behind the door, but Monty Hall, the game host, knows what's behind the door. So if she holds on her $100, she's fine. She can go on and go to Chick-fil-A, get some food and red lobsters out of church with that $100, mm -hmm. right? But if she gives up her 100 she gets to choose from door one, two, or three. Now, door number one could have uh, a convertible beamer. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Door number two could have a trip to Jamaica, but door number three could have a bag of Uts potato chips. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, but she doesn't know that. But what this game show showed us is how to make a split decision about something you can't see. My God. Ah, My God. yes. You can't see it, but you have to have faith in it. And in essence, do you hold on to what you have or trust in the God who holds your future? and destiny in his hands. This is the moment that your faith ultimately stretches because you may not always know or see what's next in your life, but you will trust the God who has already stepped into your tomorrow and made a way. Yeah. Hebrews 11, faith, it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Look at your neighbor and say, where is your faith? So we have heard, and you all have heard, uh, that God closes one door and he'll open up another one. Then whatever door he shuts, let us have the wisdom to submit to his will until he opens up a new door. God shuts a door for a reason, uh huh, and he opens another one at the right time. Look at your neighbor and say, it's going to be at the right time. And so what we got to do now is trust God to open up the right doors for us at, and get to get the right employment, the right job, the opportunity to tell somebody about how good God has been to you or put you in a season where you become debt-free through financial blessings uh, or bless you to meet someone who will bankroll your whole vision, bankroll your whole project. Let us walk through every door of God and knowing that the protection will be there, the provision, the peace, yes. and the power will be with us every step that we take. Yes. Uh, so let us fully trust him, for God truly is the one who opens up the door, and he's going to do it right on time. Yes. God uses time through seasons of life, uh, which is based on chronos. Y'all know chronos, yes. the Hebrew word. It comes from the English word chronological which is to measure the ticking of a quantitative time by using clocks and watches. Yeah. And then on, uh, on conversely, now you have Kairos time. It's qualitative where you have the opportunity to move forward in the present time. Mm -hmm. So God would allow you to be at the right place and the right time to receive what he has already predestined for your life. Yeah. Here it is, Ecclesiastes 3. Y'all know it, you learned it in Sunday school. It says here now, there is a time for everything, a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die. Come on, look at your neighbor and high-five him and say, it's my time now. It's my time now. 
Hallelujah. It's my time now. It's my time now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So as you know, we are in a season where we have many open doors before us. And Bishop has prophesied that word to us. She said that the iron gates will be swung open. And behind it won't be just one door, but it will be many doors. Yeah. But we must be ready to walk through the door. We can't go in there any kind of way. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say that we have to walk through that door with confidence, with consistency, and with continuity. And we have to stay the course as God puts the door before us and to be able to cross over in it. We can't be distracted or disrupted by anything that comes our way when God puts that door before us. Because we may miss that, op um, that opportunity to walk through that open door. So when you think about confidence, God has to prepare us because some doors that are open before us, we're walking into the unknown because God is doing a new thing, things that we have not experienced before. So God has to give us the confidence to be able to operate, to know that we are equipped and that we have the confidence in God. Just like Jeremiah 17 says, but blessed is the man or the woman who trusts in the Lord and whose confidence is in him. Amen. So we have to have that confidence, not in ourselves, because this is a spiritual assignment. All we have to do is put our confidence in God and be able to walk by faith into what he has for us. And then when we look at consistency, consistency is simply saying, I'm going to walk in this. I'm not changing. I'm, I'm not changing. Because God says, I'm calling you to this. Sometimes God can give us something new. We'll get a new attitude, yeah. right? We'll start treating people differently. We think that we are, we think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. But God is saying, be consistent in this thing and don't change. Stay the same. Stay humble before the Lord. Amen. So confidence and consistency. And then God is saying continuity. Continuity is simply saying that I am going to stay the course. I am not going to change. That I am going to allow what God positions me in to operate in it. And it's not going to be a one or done. Right? Because sometimes when God gives us an assignment, he says, I need you to do this. And you're like, okay, God, I did that one thing, check. But the assignment is for a period of time. The assignment is not up until God says it's up, until God says it's finished. Because we think that just because we said yes in that moment, okay, I'm good. And God is saying, but I require more of you. The work is not finished. I need you to put your hands to the plow and not look back. I need you to stay the course even when it becomes uncomfortable. So when you think about continuity, how many times have we started a project and we never seem to finish it? How many things do we have unfinished? What about that book? You wrote a couple of chapters in the book, and then you put it to the side. But God is saying, but the story is not finished. The half has been told. God says, finish the book. And you don't have to look around the room at anybody. Just look straight. Just look straight. Don't let them know it's you. And then God is saying, you did the mission statement. You did the business plan. But have you applied for your EIN? Have you registered for it so that you can now apply for grants? It's just on a piece of paper. But God said, I have so much more for you. If you would just take the next step. How many of us have even gone back to college? We have gone back to college. We have taken a couple of classes, but we never seen the finish. Because we get weary, but God is saying, we need to know when the time is done. God says we need some continuity in this process. 
And so as we go to look at a few of the doors, remember that you have to have confidence, you have to have consistency, and you have to have continuity. And so as we look at a few of the different types of doors, in the natural sense, but we're going to parallel it to what it looks like in the spirit and how it applies to your life. So when you look at a swinging door, and sometimes we have swinging doors in our homes, we have it on our jobs, they can swing inward or they can swing out. And sometimes life will happen and we will lose our vigor, we'll lose our passion that we once had, and then we become selective with God. <laughs> so what does that mean, preacher? I'm glad you asked. Sometimes we're in and sometimes we're out. Sometimes we feel like coming to church and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we feel like tithing, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we just, just don't feel like it. Come on, let us be honest. We've all been there and done that. Sometimes that alarm clock will go off and we're like, I, I just don't feel like getting up. And the Holy Spirit just keeps nudging you. He's like, no, there's a word for you. Your breakthrough is in this service. You just need to show up. You just need to show up. And how do, don't we know that the spirit of the living God that's in us is willing, even though this old flesh can be weak. And the flesh, and if we give way to it, then the flesh will have its way, and then we'll miss what God has for us. Amen? So God is saying that he has need of you. He's saying that he has need of you. So come back in. Don't keep going out. Come back in. And then we have the sliding doors. The sliding doors that we may have in our showers. The sliding doors that we may have on our homes when we're going out to the deck or the patio. But these doors are typically mounted on a track. It slides from side to side. It's this door that we must get on track and come back in alignment with God. We, have, we may have messed up. We may have made a mistake. But God is saying, but I can get you back on track. We have tried it our way. We think that we were big and bad enough to do our own thing. But God is saying, I have more of you. And it didn't, and when we tried to do different things our way, it didn't turn out the way we expected it. Tell your neighbor, let God get you back on track. <laughs> Amen. And don't you know that a door is more than a piece of wood or more than a metal that separates one room from another? It is a symbol. It's a symbol of opportunity. It is a symbol of new beginnings. It's a symbol of endless possibilities. Don't you hear people say sometimes, this is my month of open doors. This is my year of open doors. This is my season of open doors. This is the year that God is going to blow my mind. This is the year that God is going to open up the heavens and pour me out a blessing. And in this house, when we hear a declaration and a promise, what is it that we do? I receive it. I receive it. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. Think about all the doors you have encountered in your life. Some may have been easy to open, while others may have required a lot of effort. Uh, but regardless of the difficulty, each door has an opportunity of growth and has discovery and advancement. Sometimes the doors may seem scary. You may not be uh, want to go through that door. They may be heavy or locked, or you may not know what's yeah. waiting for you on the other side yeah. of that door. Uh, but each door is an opportunity to, to you to get closer to God. Yeah. Uh, but when you put your trust in God, you will be able to get through whatever your it is. Your it could be uh, financial uh, issues, your relationship issues, job issues, but whatever your it is, because God says he will never leave you nor forsake you. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell two people around you, he's talking about my God now. Talking about yeah. my God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God name. is amazing. And as we continue to look at the open doors and as it relates to opportunities, 
And so when you look at a manual door, uh, that's a door that requires, like Pastor Mike said, some physical effort. It requires you to push it. It requires you to pull it. And that's when the opportunities that you have in your business, your career, or your ministry, a manual door may not seem as an opportunity that requires effort, but it does. It requires effort in order for you to gain access. So sometimes God is moving us to a new place, but we have to come out of the old. The strategies and the tools that we used in the old season won't work in the new season. When it was easy and we had connections with people, God says, I'm not doing it that way. You're going to have to put in the work. You're going to have to put the muscle in. You're going to have to study that word. You're going to have to press into me for prayer. You're going to have to seek my face. You're going to have to know my mind so that I can give you the strategies. Amen. And then we have the revolving door. You know revolving doors. You find them in large public buildings. It can be in a hospital. It can be in a hotel, office building. It rotates around and around. You enter and exit sometimes without it stopping. And this type of door, as it relates to opportunities, what it represents is that you're constantly getting opportunities. You get this call, can I get you to minister? You get this call, can I have money for that business plan? Did you get this call and say, look, I know that we IRS said you owe, but I have a check for you. It's those opportunities. And so that revolving door. So in other words, these are the opportunities that you would never fathom yourself having. Amen. They may, they may not last long, which means that you can't waste time in your decision. You can't waste time in giving them your yes. Because sometimes when we waste time, we have to be able to seize the moment because wasting time, sometimes it's because we're giving way to fear. We're giving way to fear. It requires us to make a quick decision to move forward. And so when I think about the revolving door, that door continues to go around. It's going around. Some people are afraid to go in the revolving door because they're afraid that they might get stuck. And so it doesn't, it, you have to wait for the opening to be able to step out of the door. And then sometimes it's going so fast, you don't even know what's happening. But that's the season that we're in, that God has given us blessings so fast at an accelerated pace, we really have to know the timing of God. And so when we're in that revolving door, sometimes we're afraid to step out when it's going around because we think we might get stuck. We think we might get trapped in the door. So how many, how many of us, we have become stuck in our minds in this season. We have become stuck in our bodies. We have become stuck because we miss the timing of God. We have even become stuck in our spirit. God wants to know how long will you continue to go around this mountain? God said it is time to be unstuck. How long will you continue to go around the mountain of doubt and fear, the mountain of depression and oppression, the mountain of waiting until everything lines up perfectly? God, let me get my money right. God, let me come in agreement with my spouse or my friends first. We are waiting for everything to line up. But God is saying, why don't you trust me? Why don't you trust me? And when we're in that place of waiting, when we know that it's our season and we know that it's time, we get frustrated because we're not moving. We feel stuck. And so what we think is I'm frustrated because I'm not where I should be in life. And I know that God has more for me. And so God is saying, trust me and step out. Tell your neighbor, step out on faith. Amen. And then we have the automatic door. And so with the automatic door, this is the door that all you have to do is show up. And as soon as you step up to the door, it just opens. 
it just opens. And that's what God is doing in this season as well. We just have to know what door it is that God has for us. As we see in 1 Corinthians 16, 9, it says, A great door for effective work has opened before me. Choose your open door. Amen, amen. Now, God has some spiritual doors, doors that open up for worship. Any worshipers in this building? God loves our worship, and when we walk through that door, God looks forward to opening up more doors. So your worship will allow God to open up doors of fellowship, doors of intimacy with him, doors of his faithfulness for your life. And when you worship and begin to worship God, everybody just lift up your hands right now and worship God and just, and just thank him for who he is. Hallelujah. That's a sign of worship. And what that worship does is going to open up the, the prayers that you have. Anybody been praying for anything? And God hadn't a answered it yet, but with that worship you just gave God, you gave God, uh, you got God's attention. And so what that open door was is to give you power and wisdom. We, we will find power and wisdom to know that how to live a Christian life uh, uh, if we'll just ask him. And when we ask God continually, ah, uh, yes, and not of ourselves, Jesus will open that door and answer every prayer that you sent up. Here it is, Matthew 7 and 7. It says, ask and it shall be given. And seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus is knocking at your door. Hallelujah. And so the open door now of salvation and faith, Jesus is the door. The only way to salvation before any doors can open up for you, you got to come through him. Ah, we must first walk through this one by faith. Mm. Look at your neighbor and say, what kind of faith do you have? Uh, it's in the door not only for salvation but for protection of your blessings. Here it is. John chapter 10 verse 9 says, I am the door. Uh, he's the gatekeeper to give you access. Look at your neighbor and say, I got access granted. Uh, yeah, by, 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 by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and have good pasture. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm getting ready to step into some stuff now. And so the open doors of fellowship and relationship, here it is. We will continue to find fellowship and relationship and intimacy with God if we open up the door and our hearts to Jesus as he's knocking at your door. Revelations chapter 320 says, look, I have been standing at the door knocking and I am constantly knocking. If anyone hears me calling him and opens up my door, I will come in and fellowship with him. Look at your neighbor and say, open up the door. Jesus is knocking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open oh, up the door. Name. Open up the door. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So let us look at the book of Revelations. There it is. And yeah. when you look at the word revelation, <laughs> the Greek word comes from apocalypsis. Yes. And we get a populist, I'm sorry, we, our English version is apocalypse, yeah. which means an uncovering. It means an unveiling. It means a disclosure. And re revelation also refers to someone or something that is being hidden that becomes visible. God reveals and he unveils. But before we can set, before God can set an open door before us, God has to reveal the truth to us. And that's what revelation is. And God will show us the good. He'll show us the bad. And he'll show us the ugly. And we'll, he'll show us the indifferent. And we have to remember that God will even put us in a hidden place. Yeah. Just like revelation means, he will put us in a hidden place so that we can, some point when we're ready, when he's finished doing the good work or completing the good work in us, he can reveal it to us. And sometimes when we're in a hidden place or isolated place, we think that it's a negative thing or we think that it's a bad thing but an isolated place or a hidden place is that secret place when you press into God it can be a place of transformation it can be a place of change it can become a place where God will show us the issues of our hearts yeah. he will show us the things that we have suppressed 
things that we have dealt with, the things that we have hidden in the chambers of our hearts, those unhealthy cords or those soul ties that need to be severed. It's in the hidden place where God will speak to us and show us us. So we shouldn't be afraid of being in the hidden place. See, in that hidden place, sometimes we feel vulnerable right? Because we feel out of sorts. We feel off balance. And sometimes we're vulnerable and we're like, people don't understand what I'm going through. People don't know why I'm in this place. And you're struggling, but you know God is doing a work. You know that God is changing you, changing your heart, changing your mindset. And so sometimes it's a vulnerable and very uncomfortable place. But we have to trust God and allow God to do the work that he needs to do. When I think about a hidden place, when we are vulnerable, sometimes we're we're not always thinking clearly. Because God is changing the way we think. And we will misinterpret some of the things that we're seeing. We misinterpret some of the things that people are saying. And so what God does, he'll say, you know what, in this place, you have to trust me. Because what we'll do if we give way to the enemy and what the enemy is doing, then what will happen is we'll start comparing ourselves to other people. It's like, God, why are you using her and not me? God, isn't this my time? Isn't this my season? But don't you know, there is a quote that is by President Theodore Roosevelt, and it says that comparison is the thief of joy. Comparison is the thief of joy. And when you think about it, when you start comparing yourself to other people and you think you don't measure up, you think you're not doing some of the things that they should be doing, you feel kind of sad. You feel low. And so it is a true statement that comparison is a thief of joy. Think about it. When you go onto your social media platforms, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, whatever you go on, you start seeing people launching their businesses. You see people launching their ministries. You see people getting married. And it's like, God, I've been praying to get married for like 10 years. Surely, surely this is my portion. God, I've been praying for a relationship. And they just, they just met six months ago and they get ready to get married. So we begin to compare ourselves. We see people celebrating their children, graduating from college, graduating from high school. And you're still praying for your, your son or your daughter to come to the Lord. It's like, God, why, why, why can't that be my portion? Why can't that be for me? But it's in the hidden place, as I said, that we are vulnerable. But we have to trust God in that place because God is no respecter person. What God has for you is for you, but we have to trust the timing of God. We have to trust that God is doing the work and in us and through us. And when we're ready, God will give us what he has for us. So all of the things that you saw other people getting, God said, it's for you, but it's not your time. It's not your turn. But wait for it because it should surely come. But even in that hidden place, God says, just like Jeremiah would say, sometimes things have to be rooted up out of us. That is not like God. Sometimes things have to be torn down, the altars in our hearts that cause us to be separated from God, cause us not to press into God like he wants us to. But God says, but there's going to be a time when you allow me to finish the work, that it will be a time where you can build up and you can plan. And so we bless God for that. And so when we look at the apostle John that wrote Revelations, God gave him the revelation to write letters to the seven churches. And the letters were simply about their faith, saying that you were once strong in your faith, but now you're beginning to decline spiritually. But it was because of correction. It was because, I'm sorry, it was because of the warfare that they were going through. Sometimes when we're experiencing warfare, sometimes we get weary. Sometimes our faith, 
wavers. And sometimes we cry out and we say, God, I believe, but help my unbelief. Because, God, I'm being attacked on every side. God, I need you to be a fence all around me. My faith is wavering, but, God, I trust you because I know the promises of God are still yea and amen. And so that was the letter that was sent. But the letter was also about hope. Hope to remain faithful in adversity. Hope to remain faithful in persecution. Hope that we have a Savior who is Alpha and Omega. Hope that we have a Savior who is the first and the last. Hope that we have a Savior who is the beginning and our end. Hope that we have a Savior who is Lord God Almighty. Hope that we have a Savior that who is, was, and is to come. Our hope is built on nothing else but Jesus' blood and righteousness. So we have hope in Christ Jesus when we're going through adversity, when we're going through trials and tribulation. So put your hope in Jesus. Bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the revelation was also about Jesus' glory and his final victory. And so even in our season of suffering, even in our season of grief and brokenness and disappointment and even loneliness, God is saying, all you have to do is cry out to me. Cry out to me and I will answer. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he answered. He answered. God said, that's all you have to do. Just rest rest in me. He will reveal a greater truth to you. He will reveal healing. He will reveal restoration. He will reveal your peace and your joy. God will even give you purpose in that place. He will give you the revelation before you are released into your next Hallelujah. and into your open doors. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. And let us dwell into now because this is very prolific and profound because it exemplifies in Revelation 3, chapters of verse 7 through 8. It says, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, yeah. and shuts, and no one opens. You got to understand, child of God, that everything had to go through God. Yeah. He was considered a shot caller, Dr. Al. He, yeah. he was the man, Elder Rico. He, he, he had authority over the whole kingdom. Look at your neighbor and say, that's the kind of God I serve. That's the kind of God I serve. And so here it is, the scripture now says, I know your works. God said he sees what you're doing because faith without works is dead. He said, I have set before you, come on, ah, and no one can shed it. Did y'all hear that? No, for you have little strength. God knows we're weak. Have kept my word. You didn't give up on God while you were going through your trials, and you have not denied my name. All right, faith without works is dead, right? Okay, I know your works. Jesus said this to each of the seven churches. The church at Philadelphia has served God well in difficult times. God wants to see if you will bless his name while you're going through your trials. I need somebody in here who's been going through trials and tribulations, but you praise your way out of it. Where my praise is at? Somebody shout hallelujah. Here it is. Here it is. I think y'all read it too slow. You read it too fast. Pastor Henry said, I have sat before you an open door. Nobody can shut it. Nobody can open it. The church of Philadelphia, here it is, an open door set before them. Jesus told them he opened up the door. What God is trying to teach us this morning is that he has set before us an open door. So whatever you've been praying for, the door is swung wide open. Oh, man, okay. Anybody been praying for anything in here? Is it just me? No, no. If you've been praying for something, you got to understand the door has been open wide open. Now, get this, though. While that door has been open, can't nobody shut it. I mean, nobody. Look at your neighbor and say, can't nobody shut my open door. Yes, yes. So here it is. So whatever door was closed in your life, yeah, faith is open now. That loan that you got denied for, go back and get it again because the door has been open. 
Uh, the fact that um, you send somebody to you to open up your door, God says, I'm coming myself to open up the door. He didn't send Gabriel. He didn't send an angel. He didn't, he didn't send Mary. God said, I'm going to open up the door. Ah, look at your name and say, that's my God. That and no one can shut it. Here it is. That means that no demon, no warlock, no witch uh, can shut it. Nobody in the on the face of this earth can shut it. They can try to seal it up with nails. They they can get machinery to try to shut your door. Ah, uh, but give, give God praise for your neighbor's open door. Yeah, I want to see who's unselfish in this house. No, y'all ain't praising God enough for me. Give God praise for your neighbor Hallelujah. who's been praying for an open door. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody name. shout hallelujah. Bless his name for the open door. Hallelujah. That's right. Bless his name for the open door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. In this season of open doors and opportunities, God has to mold us. God has to shape us. God has to put us in a place sometimes that is uncomfortable, even in a place where it is painful. And I think Pastor Ernest said this one time that we have to be comfortable, uncomfortable. It, we have to be comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. And I bless God because that word blessed me. So we will find ourselves in a place where we have to yield and say, God, not my will, but thy will be done. So here we are with Jeremiah and Elijah. Will you just sit there and die in your wilderness situation, in your time of struggle when you're going through? But don't you know that God will make a way in the wilderness? Therefore, our hope is built on Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So since God has a plan that you will prosper, you can't go through the door unprepared because God knows what you need to be equipped with. God knows what you need to get to your next this is a season where you have to be ready so you don't have to get ready. God says, trust me in this process because he will make you ready. It's just like a marathon runner. God needs to prepare them. And they have to be athletes, uh, that they have to be ready to compete. Uh, they, their bodies have to be in shape. Uh, their minds have to be focused. Uh, they have to get ready because if you jump out there when you're not ready, you can get hurt. Uh, you could be punished in the field or in a valley situation if you are not quite prepared. If you are going to get in the race, uh, you got to stay in shape because the word says, the race is not given to the swift or to the strong, but to he who endures to the end. You have to deal with hardship like a good soldier. God says you got to act like it is a training camp. God says that he will give you stamina. He will give you strength to keep going. Tell your neighbor, keep going. Don't give up and don't throw in the towel. Now, the attacks will come from the enemy. The devil is going to throw everything but the kitchen sink at you. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm ready for that joker now. Because he doesn't want you to go through your door that God opened for you because he realizes if you go through your door, God is going to provide you with every opportunity that you need. And there ain't nothing he can do to stop it. God will give us strength to endure and persevere in the difficult times because we got the victory now. <laughs> Grab your neighbor by the hand and lift up the hand and say, we already won the fight. Come on, come on. Say, we already got the victory. But all of that is to get you in shape. It is to get you obedient to the assignment that God has for you. Ah, God realizes it will be hard sometimes. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, I've been through some rough stuff. Ah, but God got my back. God realizes it's going to be some hard times. And some of us have been in some situations where we felt like throwing in the towel. We need to find ourselves saying we didn't sign up for this. <laughs> they told me when I got saved, everything would be answered. <laughs> ah, but that ain't how the story goes. <laughs> 
Don't you throw in the towel now. God said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Ah, look at your neighbor and say, you better not give up now. Because in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, it said, And let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season, look at your neighbor and say, It's my season now. Ah, you can't give up on God because he's done too much for you. Ah, come here, child of God. Will you choose the door where God takes you through the long way? Through the process of life where your faith will grow because you will be tested by God. Uh, your belief in what God can do will expand. You will begin to bless God and give God glory for the stuff that you lost. Uh, you will begin to bless him for the trials and the tribulations you had to endure along the way. You will lose some stuff, but you will get double for your trouble. Now, now, I don't think y'all heard me. Let me tell it to the people in the back. You're going to get double for everything you went through. Look at your neighbor and say, I need my double now. But keep in mind that you don't want to get to heaven and God shows you all that stuff that he was going to bless you with. Because you didn't open up that door, he's going to show you the million dollar contract that you didn't go through to get. He's going to show you how it was that you didn't choose the door to get the new job. He, the door that had your healing behind it. The elevation of your anointing was behind that door. Because you were so big and bad enough, you wanted to go through your own door. Look at your neighbor and say, you better listen to God. Ah, here it is now. Now, because you didn't go through that door, God says, I'm going to give you a second chance. Ah, look at your name and say, God is a God of a second chance. Ah, because what he's going to do is get you out of that door, the wrong door that you went through, and he's going to put you on the track to go through the right door. Look at your neighbor and say, I got a second chance now. Somebody say, I got a second chance now. I got a second chance. Oh, bless his name. We serve a God of second chances. There's a process to get through the doors. There's a transition from the old to the new that's going to get you to your next. God is saying, yes, there will be suffering behind the door that I am sending you through. But if I suffered, you will suffer as well as a child of God. If you suffer with God, you will reign with God. The Bible declares in 1 Peter 5 and 10, after you have suffered a little while, the God of grace who imparts his blessings and favor, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, he will himself complete, confirm, strengthen, and establishing you, making you what you ought to be. That is the God that we serve. Yes, there will be suffering moments behind that door, but God promises that he will go through that suffering with you. He will give you joy because you may endure through a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, oh bless his name. Some hallelujah. doors will make you feel like if, if, if it's in one thing, it's another. Yes, yes. And how would these things get better come some more trials and tribulations? Here they come. Then look at your neighbor and say, you are going to go through some stuff. Yes. But you got to believe God while you're going through yes. it. Psalm 27 and 5 said, for in the time of trouble, mm. he will hide me in his pavilion, yes. in the secret place. Of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall hide me upon a rock. And that rock is Jesus. Look at your name and say, I'm standing on the rock now. Uh, some doors you go through will appear that you are alone. And that you are fighting against an army of demons. And you will find yourself discouraged and afraid. Uh, look at your name and say, you got to know that God is going to be with you. The women with the issue of blood. Yeah. Uh, she said, come on, Long Range and Tonto, let's ride. Uh, because the woman with the issue of blood, here it is. She, she had known that if she would go to the right door, to choose the right door, that she would allow God, would allow her to touch the hem of his garment. Joseph chose the door that allowed him to go through the pit to the palace. Isaiah 43, 18 and 9, 19. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Look at your neighbor and say, God is getting ready to do a new thing in my life now. And I will make a way an open door in the wilderness. Yes, sir, in the wilderness and the rivers. Now, sometimes God shuts doors for your protection. 
uh, people in, uh, believe now, often believe that a short door, shut door is a problem. Uh, but maybe you lost a job or relationship ends, you're, you're devastated about it, but you come to find out that God shut the door for your protection. For instance, the new job you got was better than the old job you lost. Ah, uh, yeah, you're better, be, you had better workers, you better co-workers, you had better pay. That new boo or that spouse that you lost, got divorced from, now you got a sweet boo, you got an awesome wife, no drama, no, you got peace in the relationships, you got more love now. Sometimes God will crack that door open so you can just look through it and glimpse it. Anybody dreaming in here? Anybody realize that God has something better for you? He wants to inspire you to grow. Maybe you are not quite ready for what God wants you to do or to get to your next, but you got to be prepared for it. God describes this in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. It says, at the time I have decided, my words will come true. You can trust what I say about the future. It may take long, but keep on waiting. It will happen. Look at your name and say, it will happen. Here's how I know. Amos 9, ch uh, chapter 9, verse 13, it said, declares this. Jesus declares, it won't be long now. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, it won't be long now. Ah, uh, Because it's going to happen so fast. Your head is going to swim. One thing fast on the heels of another. You won't even be able to keep up with it. As a matter of fact, God's going to bless you so much, you're going to have to give stuff away. He's going to bless your money so much, you're going to have to give money away. People are going to bless you with cars, houses, and money. And an anointing of God is going to be upon your life. Look at your neighbor and say, it's going to happen real fast for me. Come on, let us close now. Hallelujah. So as we go through the testimonies of yeah. those in the Bible, Hallelujah. Paul and Silas chose to praise and worship God. He, they chose the worship door. Hallelujah. They caused the earthquake in the yeah. jailhouse. The chains fell off, and the prison doors were open to set the captives free. The blonde Bonamaeus chose the door that allowed him to get his sight back. Hallelujah. The paralytic brother yeah. chose the door that allowed the four homies to to take him to Jesus yeah. through the rooftop. Hallelujah. And then Jesus chose a door that My allowed Lord. him to be beaten, yeah. that allowed him to have a crown of thorns on his head. Hallelujah. He was ridiculed. Yeah. He was scandalized. My he mind. was sent to the cross. Yes, but the best door to choose is yeah. the one-way door. Yeah. The door that says in John 14, 6 that Jesus said, I am the way. Yeah. I am the truth. Hallelujah. I am the life. Yeah. No one comes through the Father yeah. except, except through me. me. Yeah. We chose that door because we represent yeah. the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We chose that door yeah. because living, he loved me. Yeah. Dying, he saved me. Mary, he carried my sins far away. I am justified Hallelujah. and he freed me forever. We chose that door yeah. because they hung him high and they stretched him wide. Yeah. They hung his head and then he died. But that's not how the story ends. Yeah. Because three days later, he got up for me. Yeah. He got up for you. Yes. Somebody shout up. hallelujah. Hallelujah. We chose that door. Yes, he did. Because he healed your body. Yes. We chose that door. Hallelujah. Because he set you free. Yes. We chose that door. Because he delivers you. He Hallelujah. chose that door yes. because he blessed your life. Hallelujah. We chose that door because he anointed you. We chose that door yes. because financial breakthroughs was in that door. <laughs> Somebody stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Give yes. God's name the glory. Glory to your name. If you know he opened yes. up the door Choose for the you. Right door. Give God the praise. Hallelujah. If God opened up a door yes. that you can walk through. Give God Hallelujah. praise. Glory to your name, Praise him God. for what he's doing right now. Yes, walk through the Give open God door. Praise. Yes. Grab your Hallelujah. neighbor by the hand. And give God's name praise yes. for Glory. what God is doing for your neighbor. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Take us up high. Let's go, Ernest. Yes, Hallelujah. Y'all gotta shout like you already got it. By the spirit if you've been praying God. for anything. <laughs> God. Give God's name for praise. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Shout like everybody in your house is saved. Shout like everybody in your house is saved.
hear yes, what your kids are saying. Yes. Go through that door and take your children back. Go through that door and take your spouse back. Go through that door. Go through that door and take your ministry back. Go through that door and take your anointing back. Go through that door and take your joy back. Go through that door. That door and take your strength back. Go through that door and take everything back that the devil tried to take from you. This is your door. This is your season. This is your time. Go through the door. God says, I put the door before you. Don't stand there and watch it. He says, step into it. Step into it. Get out of your seats. Walk through the door. Walk through the door. Walk through the door. You're just standing there. God says that this is a faith walk. You got to walk it out. You got to walk through that door. What does God have for you? What have you prayed for? What has God promised you? We're in a season. Somebody of just take door. three steps. Take three yes. steps into your open door. And once you get through the door, give God's name praise Hallelujah. for what's behind the door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hey. Glory to your name. I, I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to get it out. I got to praise. I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to get it out. I got to praise. Yes. I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to get it out. I got to praise. Yes. Hey, 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 Bless your hey. name, God. Praise him for the open door. Thank you, God, for the open door. I'm going to get what God has for me. I am walking through the door. I won't allow the enemy to trip me up. I won't allow the enemy to distract me. I won't allow the enemy to confuse me. But I walk in authority. I walk in boldness. I'm going to go through that door and get everything that God has for me. This is your time. This is your open door. This is your season. Hallelujah. And don't let it pass you by. Hallelujah. You have to seize the moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seize the moment. Now here it is. As we're, standing, as we're standing all over the building, Hallelujah, God bless God. you. We thank God for it. Here's what we have to understand. Yes. Softly minstrels, although God opened up that door for all of us, because he woke us up this morning. You got to understand that the devil has enemies planted in that door. But what you got enough. Yeah. I mean, I know most of us from the hood in here, we can fight a little bit. Uh, you got to go in there and take back what the devil tried to steal from you. Come on, where my fighters at? Come on, all I need is about four or five of y'all. We going down the alley of Berry Farms and take our stuff back. <laughs> the door's been open. We're walking through it. we got to be easy now. You, know, you don't think the devil is going to just sit back and watch God bless you? Come on, y'all wake up. Look at your neighbor and say, wake up. Because he's going to try to do everything he can to stop you from getting your blessing. He's sending everything. But what you got to do is stand up and say, for God I live and for God I die. Amen? Amen. So just grab it now. Walk through your door. Let, 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 let's open up a door. Just, just pretend like you're opening up a door. I want you to open it up. And then take one step in it. And everything you've been praying for, just allow it to rest upon you. Come on, lift up your hands and worship. Because this worship says, God, thank you for opening up the door. Thank you for answering my prayers. Thank you for the blessings that was behind the door. I was a little scared to go through the door, God, but you pushed me. You encouraged me to go through that door. Now, I don't have any more fear because God is with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, now put those hands together. Give God's name praise. Hallelujah. And then encourage your neighbor and say, I got mine today. I got mine today. I got mine. I got today. mine. Hallelujah. There we go. I got mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you were not able to say that today, because in order to open the door, 
You have to know the gatekeeper to the door. You have to know Jesus as Lord and Savior over your life in order to know what door he has set before you. And so we are opening up the doors of the church. And so if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior over your life, if you don't know him as your healer, if you don't know him as the gatekeeper to the door, we ask you to come. We ask you to come. God is not asking you to make sure that you got it all right. You got it all together. He doesn't care what you did last week or what you did last night. God says he loves you and he loves you unconditionally. 